Welcome to finding out what some of the hot trends are right now in APIs. Um, I've got five big trends that I'm going to talk about. But first, who am I? Why am I here? My name is Ken Lane. I'm the chief evangelist for Postman. Uh, some people also know me as the API evangelist. I've had a blog covering the technology, the business, and the politics of APIs for the last decade. And last year, I'm rolling over exactly one year, I joined Postman to help continue and build on that work. But really, my role is to light the fire under the imagination of our customers and would-be customers when it comes to what's possible across the API lifecycle. So I study pretty uh, detailed ways how API providers are designing, defining, and delivering and supporting their APIs. So I'm here to just kind of give you a high level view of five big API trends that we're seeing uh, as we look at our customers. So Postman has 12 million users and we're just about to publish our state of API uh, report, which is a look into what a, a good section of our customers are doing when it comes to their APIs. So what I've done is I've looked through that and I've pulled out some of the, the interesting trends that I think y'all might learn from when it comes to APIs. And so I'm going to look at uh, an open API driven lifecycle, uh, API test automation, API integration automation, which is, is a different purpose, but some of the same tools. And then we're going to talk about API governance and how serverless API is impacting the API lifecycle. So one of the biggest trends, and I would say this is one that has a lot of, uh, a lot of legs, a lot of, a lot of deep roots because it's been growing for some time now, but there's a renewed movement right now around the specification, formerly known as Swagger, but the specification now is part of the Linux foundation and it's called open API and open API is a machine and re human readable specification for describing what your API does. I've got a little snippet here on the right hand side of a user API, but what uh, the open API does is it allows API providers to describe the details of each API request and what what developers and consumers can uh, uh, expect when when it when that response of that API comes back. So it describes the surface area of the API and really allows us to get on the same page when it comes to what an API does. And it provides a, a contract uh, that is technical, but also reflects the business goals and the business objectives. And it provides a contract that you can share with other developers and increasingly other non-developers and business stakeholders and allowing them to uh, uh, kind of level set when it comes to what an act, what an API does. Now, why, why do we do this? You have this, this machine readable contract. Well, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of how this contract can be used across the API lifecycle and actually make API providers and consumers lives uh, a lot easier. So the first reason why people are using Swagger or Open API uh, as a specification is it provides always up-to-date documentation. So documentation for APIs is one of the biggest pain points that developers face when it comes to understanding what an API does, how it works. And because we have the surface area of that API described as a Open API documentation, we can produce really attractive, consistent API documentation that describes every path, every parameter, whether it's a header, a query parameter, and then really go into details on what, what, what the contents of those responses will be when you actually make an API call. And then you can really describe uh, the status codes that get returned as part of each API response, what errors you can uh, expect, and then there's examples that are in there that really help uh, show what's possible so that when a developer or non-developer lands on uh, API documentation, 
they can they can scan it they can read it in detail and actually understand the the moving parts and pieces and see examples of that in action and it really helps onboard developers and make their life a lot easier when it comes to uh, putting apis to work so api documentation is essential for onboarding developers and this is the primary reason we see uh, not just tech companies, but mainstream companies adopting open APIs as specification because it's really streamlining and helping them deliver more consistent API documentation for their users. The second stop along the API lifecycle where these API definitions are being applied is for mocking an API. So because we have all the details of, of the request and the responses, we have examples of what each request and response should look like. We can actually mock that and actually provide a, a working representation of an API. Now it's not complete. It doesn't have all of the details that an API will have when it's in production, but you can get pretty close and you can really include sample data. And this really changes how developers approach uh, the, the overall software development lifecycle when it comes to APIs. They're able to actually mock it before they start writing any code, taking that open API definition and mocking all the details and then using that as part of the development process or using it just for testing and being able to test certain outcomes and make sure uh, that tests are functional and doing what they should be doing. But ultimately, this really helps change the conversation when it comes to designing an API and being able to iterate upon that design in a, in a, in a much quicker way. So teams are creating an open API definition and that they feel is complete enough, but they really need to get other eyeballs on it from other stakeholders, whether business or developers. They're able to publish documentation and then a mock and then share that mock server with other developers and say, is this what you're looking for? Does this work? And then developers can say, no, we need this parameter. This should be changed to that and actually make tweaks on the, the design of this contract. And so this really helps teams iterate upon the design of an API, make changes in a much safer environment than it would be if you actually wrote code and deployed this to production. So mocking APIs actually saves you time, saves you money, and, and really puts that open API contract to work in a way that actually helps you deliver a better API in a, in a shorter period of time. Now, once teams get their open API contract, they've, they've iterated upon it, they've got docs, they've got these mocks, They've got everyone on the team, all the stakeholders in agreement about what this API should do. Uh, then they're able to start generating tests that actually validate the JSON being returned as part of each response or being provided as part of each request, uh, checking that there's proper status codes and consistent HTTP status codes uh, being returned, that the schema the, the data actually that's part of the API response is, is valid against the API contract. So the, the open API that acts as a contract and has all the details, we wanna validate that with each API request and writing tests that do that is how we, uh, we validate those contracts. But then these APIs are also gonna be dependent on other systems and other APIs. So we also want to do integration testing and you can auto generate a lot of those tests based upon these open API definitions. And then we can use those same each of those API calls in what's considered workflow testing, which allow us to actually uh, mimic specific business processes. So, for example, we have an API that allows us to add a product to a shopping cart. We have uh, the ability to then uh, check out. Um, of that cart and actually uh, apply our billing information and then send an email and an invoice once that order is complete. So those are four or five different API calls that need to be made. We can actually define a test that works all the way through that workflow and actually test uh, all of those. Because we have each of those APIs defined as an open API that allows us to 
automate a lot of that 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 creation and 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 definition of those workflows. But ultimately, really API testing or open API driven testing is about defining contracts and then validating those contracts that they're still working. So all of this, when we're looking at uh, adopting open API, creating docs, we create mock representations, and then we've created tests. And all of this is considered to be part of an API first approach to delivering APIs, because again, we haven't written code. All we've been doing is defining open APIs, uh, generating docs, generating mocks, and then we're validating those contracts. Now we can hand those contracts off to a development team to actually be uh, developing those. And then our tests that we developed as part of this process should just work and validate those deployments once they're in production. So that kind of shows the the overall life cycle of how open API is 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 changing how teams build APIs. And it's not just about APIs for docs. Uh, it's much more. Um, there's other stops along the API lifecycle, like performance and security testing, uh, code generation. There's many other ways you can put that open API to work. But docs, mocks, and testing are the the core three that are part of an API first lifecycle that we see a growing number of our users. It's approaching 50% of our Postman users who responded to our uh, state of the API survey are approaching their the delivery of APIs using an API first approach with open API at the center. So this has really dramatically shifted over the last five years and is a pretty serious trend that is changing how businesses are delivering their APIs. I showed how you can create tests from the open API, but API test automation and making testing much more efficient, much uh, more consistent, and then automated across uh, enterprise operations is, is the next trend that we're seeing grow dramatically in, in uh, across our customer base. So what is testing automation? We talked a little bit about the types of contracts we're going to be doing contract testing. We're going to be doing integration testing. Like how do you, how do these APIs work together um, when they're dependent on other APIs? And then we talked about workflows, like the shopping cart order workflow. But workflow tests are very much about making sure that APIs are meeting business requirements and actually aren't just each individual API working. It's actually these APIs in a certain order meeting a specific business objective is working and it works consistently. We can schedule that and, and, and know that it's always uh, up and working as expected. And then we talked a little bit about uh, performance. Uh, you can test the performance of these APIs. And then there's a growing number of security vendors and tooling makers that are emerging to help provide the ability to scan, to lock down, secure, and find vulnerabilities in APIs. And being able to do this across the growing number of APIs is proving to be a challenge. And so it, automation is a pretty important part of this because we have, we have, most organizations have hundreds or thousands of APIs behind the web mobile apps that they're building. And being able to secure those uh, with just a, a human workforce is just not possible. So automating how we secure our APIs and we test our APIs is pretty important. But one of the, I would say the, the fastest growth areas in the last year when it comes to API testing and overall automation is what's considered governance. So it's not just an individual API that we're testing for contracts for integrations and performance and security and it's uh, fit with an overall workflow. It's what's the design of that API? Is it consistent with other teams? Are we using our parameters and building schemas in a consistent way? So when you use APIs across different teams or different orgs, uh, that that they they behave similarly and they act in in some of the, the consistent ways. And so governance is about testing how those APIs come together, how they're designed, how they're developed, and how they're they're delivered, 
we'll talk a little bit more about governance in a little bit as a, as a trend because it is is the fastest growing area. So we talked about how we have these different types of tests, contract, integration, performance, security. Uh, the automation portion of that is pretty critical. And there's three main ways in which we see teams automating these tests that are being built around APIs. Uh, runners, um, which is a, a, a quick way to run a single uh, contract test, security test, a, a human being or a developer can say, I want to run against this API, so manual execution of, of these tests. The second main way is using monitors, which allow you to schedule these runs uh, on, on a schedule that to, to run the test to make sure it's being being met on a on an hourly, on a, every four hours, daily, weekly. Uh, de develop, API developers can can find the schedule that works for them. And then running those monitors from multiple regions, understanding where your customers are at and what they're looking for, and trying to find the, the, a quick way to uh, make sure their needs are being met. And then the third is, is within pipelines and being able to actually uh, execute those as part of a CI CD pipeline and running the contract integration, security, performance, and governance tests at the pipeline level. Now, all of this tooling, all of these approaches are being used in other ways beyond just testing, and they're using they're being used to integrate uh, with with different APIs. So the same type of of tooling and approaches, rather than testing the outcomes of the API, they're actually being used to move our bits and bytes uh, around the internet. So when something happens on Twitter, we can put it into a spreadsheet. When something happens on a forum. We can add a support ticket to our uh, to our central support system. So there's there's some essential ingredients in this integration automation, and having uh, machine readable definitions such as collections that describe what what are we integrating with, how are we doing it, and then environments are providing us with uh, different ways for actually uh, applying those integrations. So. Different types of users um, are involved, different types of accounts. Say we're integrating with Twitter and we may have a business account. We may have a, 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 an account for a specific department. Environments allow us to switch those uh, accounts while using the same integration collection and be a little bit more efficient in, in how we actually define these integrations. The collections allow us to organize those and have those available. And then teams can reuse them with environments, apply different uh, authentication to them, and then script and automate around that. So when you pull that uh, integration data from Twitter, you can then script uh, filtering out only the data you need before you then pass it off to another system. So these collections and environments coupled with authentication and the scripting are allowing for a uh, uh, new approach to how we integrate with APIs and how we automate that. Think uh, services like If This Then That and Zapier, but in a much more uh, uh, distributed way using common open source tools and scripting languages like JavaScript. And then again, just like with automation, testing automation, we're able to run those manually, we're able to schedule them using monitors, and we're able to integrate them in the pipeline. And this is really the, the key to automation and helping us scale how we're, we're moving our business bits and bytes around the internet, um, allows us to use many different SaaS applications in much more efficient ways. And then I mentioned uh, how governance is kind of the, the trend within a trend when it comes to testing. And API governance is about uh, helping uh, reduce the friction and, and the chaos that exists across our operations and allows us to be much more efficient in how we deliver APIs. I talked about how governance is about uh, design, but really ultimately uh, when it comes to training, guidance, and governance, um, helping developers consistently deploy, manage, test, monitor, and support their APIs, and then providing a robust set of reporting that uh, teams can use and management and, and leadership can use to understand what's happening across teams. 
but all of this is about defining consistent behavior, what teams uh, should be doing when they deliver APIs, and then automating it so that you can report on that and scale that across teams. And so the last uh, kind of trend that we're seeing um, in the Postman platform is teams going for an entirely different approach to delivering their APIs using a new serverless approach. So serverless is kind of caught caught fire lately across cloud providers. It's a quick way to uh, write code, deploy code, and scale code. And this is being used to change the API lifecycle and change how teams are de delivering APIs, making them more simple, scalable, and only paying for what you use. So if that API is not being called, you're not paying for its usage. And I would say that business implication is really one of the biggest changes to the lifecycle. But you can do this in multiple programming languages, Go, Python, PHP, JavaScript, pick your language, you can do it. Um, it's delivering compute as well as database storage behind your APIs, and then it seamlessly integrates with your gateway. So a serverless APIs are really changing how we approach uh, the API lifecycle and really uh, shifting the landscape when it comes to how we deploy APIs and make them available. And then using an API first process that's a open API driven, we're able to rapidly iterate and, and deliver APIs in a much quicker way. And a serverless approach really allows you to realize your multi-cloud vision, delivering APIs consistently across AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure and other platforms, and really helps you be more resilient in your uh, API lifecycle. Hopefully all of this helps you uh, think about the API lifecycle in some different ways. And thanks for having me.